Hello everyone, my name is Mathieu Fazani. I am a product manager for um, Dalet, especially on the Dalet Brio and Dalet on Buffin platforms, which are the IO and uh, high quality transcoding and mastering platforms. Um, so this morning I am um, on the uh, EBU and AMOA booth to uh, give you an overview of uh, Films Capture and provide you more information and explain you how Films Capture is becoming now a real game changer for media companies and for uh, vendors as well. So I will start first with a quick introduction and reminder about FIMS, what it is and uh, where it comes from, because you might not be all aware of, uh, of FIMS. So the first thing to understand is um, that FIMS stands for Framework for Interoperable Media Services, and that's a joint initiative from EBU and AMWA. Um, so you have a team of um, experts working on defining a framework to help media companies and help also software vendors. So what were the uh, motivations to start this initiative? Well, if you are part of the uh, broadcast industry, you know that uh, in the last 10 years, everything has moved very quickly. There is an acceleration in the, uh, in the changes of the industry. And if you want to uh, resist and to uh, um, stay in this industry, you have to react quickly to have some agility in your architecture, to have some flexibility, and to be able to adjust your architecture based on your customer requirements. So that's where FIMS is very important because it helps you to move from old um, fashion architecture where all the different functions were very linked together, tightly linked and correlated, to something which is more flexible, more scalable. And that's a win-win um, deal for um, media vendors, media companies, but also for um, providers and um, old companies which are involved even providing hardware or software solutions. So the key things to understand is to move away from an architecture where all the different media functions are mixed together to an architecture that we call service oriented, where we have a media orchestration system where all the business logic is held and where we define common interfaces to control each individual function of the system. That's very key to uh, be able to quickly change and manage different capture services, different transform services. Um, if you have one day to um, scale your system, then you only need to add another capture service, but the common interface will stay the same. So decoupling the orchestration from the media services, decoupling the different media functions, um, and that's very key to minimize the integration effort and to help the flexibility and the uh, scalability of all the architectures. Um, so if we had to summarize it in maybe one sentence, FIMS provides a framework to ease the implementation of service-oriented architectures for media, for the media industry, because SOA is not new in the IT world, but it's a bit new or a bit fresh for the media industries. So FIMS defines a data model to represent uh, all the objects that will be processed, a set of standard interfaces. So, so far we have capture, transfer, transform, and repository interfaces, so to manipulate those objects. And this framework vision, which is very important and which is the core of all this initiative. Um, so, as I said before, this is a win win approach for media companies and vendors. Why? Um, for a vendor, so for Dalet, for any company which is providing a service to a post-production house, to a broadcaster, that simplifies the integration and that essentially moves all the effort not on the interface where the value is not, but on the core of the application itself. So instead of uh, delivering some custom services or developing some custom interfaces, we can um, improve the quality of the software and give more flexibility to uh, the, the customer. So that's for the vendor. For a media company, then it gives a very um, safe way and clean way to build an architecture. All the business logic will be held into this top layer infrastructure, and then you can have a best of breed architecture where you can select all the components that you want to use and have common interfaces. So no need to implement a new connector for each new vendor. Um, so that's a win-win um, game and win-win uh, approach that FIMS is trying to, um, to push. So now a bit more about FIMS Capture, which is the, uh, the purpose of this meeting um, this morning. Um, there are some questions that uh, 
you need to think about. If you have to uh, add an ingest channel to uh, an architecture, first the question is where is my ingest channel now? In the past it was um, on-premise, but now it can also be off-site in the cloud. So think about that and how you will integrate easily those different components if they are in different locations. The next question is who is the owner of my ingest channel? Now with the cloud you have a full set of um, um, of um, possibilities where um, the responsibility of the owner can be mixed between the customer, let's say, and the provider. So it can be a full on-premise um, architecture to a full software as a service. And that applies as well for ingest channels. So even in this situation, how do you define the best architecture to manage those different scenarios? Next question is which technology to use? You can have a mix of video servers. Some are very good in one area, others are very good in another format, and for sure you will mix different technologies all together. So how you want to integrate easily without duplicating the effort and how to minimize the, um, the, uh, the time that you will spend to support those different technologies. And the last question is what is the video source type? Before, in the past, it was BNC cables, but now we are starting to see a lot IP streaming ingest. So how do you also combine those different technologies? So when you have all those questions, you cannot continue with the old um, fashion architecture approach and you need to standardize the interfaces to manage all those ingest operations in an independent, uh, independently of the video server product or brand, uh, independently of the video source type, of the location, of the owner as well. And all those questions are, Films Capture will help a lot to simplify and to provide this common interface. And this will be key for all the uh, software vendors and also for the media companies. So what we'll define now and what is defined in Films is a way to define this connector, move all the logic of the business logic in the orchestration system and uh, interact with the video server with the standard interface. So that's, that's why Films Capture is very key now, especially in these transitions from SDI to IP. So more details about Films. I will uh, be a more, that will be a bit more technical, but I, I'm sure you will, uh, you will continue this, this, to follow this presentation. So Films Capture, you have different means to implement it. You have a SOAP and a REST um, implementations. You have all the documentation available and the WSDL and XSD to provide this to your developers and that will be very easy for them to implement those different connectors and the latest version is the version 1.1. For Films Capture you have a number of operations um, to control the, those, the, the objects. So you have the capture, manage job, query job, notify capture result and notify fault operations. And for each operation you have a number of messages which are exchanged um, during the interaction between the orchestration engine, uh, orchestration system and the um, the capture media service. So typically for the capture operation, there is first a capture request message which is sent to um, the capture engine and then there will be an acknowledge message coming back or a fault message. So then you understand how we use those different operations. Manage job is to stop an ingest job, extend it. Query job is to have all the list of running uh, recordings, ongoing recordings, and you can also have some notifications to know where uh, when a recording has ended, etc. So you have all this framework which is specified in, um, in the Films Capture. And then if we go more into the details, we have this data model which specifies all the different objects uh, which are um, in defined in the Films framework. So you have the BM object which is the asset itself. You have job, so when you create a trigger an ingest, this will create a job. And so you have a number of um, objects. I will not go too much into the details, but for Films Capture, what is important is templates. And the template is what will define all the characteristics to um, do the uh, recording. And um, so you can have one to end profiles per capture job. And for each profile, uh, we will define a transform atom and a transfer atom. That will define um, the format that we'll use for the ingest. So that's the transform atom and the um, destination. So if it's an, let's say an IP stream and you want to record it to a specific location, that will be defined in the transfer atom profile. So this is where we will define the characteristics and where we can play with those settings to do an IP streaming ingest, an SDI ingest, 
with a machine which is in the cloud, which is on-premise. And this is where you have all the flexibility to do recordings using a service-oriented architecture. Some um, applications which are already available right now, so I will um, give examples based on our own experience. Um, one example of FIMS interoperability is, so is Brio, which is our Dalets I.O. platform. It's an ingest and playout platform. And uh, there was no web service API so far. And we've um, seen a lot of requests coming from customers to make it more um, easy to integrate. And now Brio supports SIM capture version 1.1. And to prove the flexibility of this plugin, we've implemented a specific plugin in Adobe Premiere uh, where you can directly trigger an ingest from your Adobe Premiere client and this will trigger the ingest on the Brio using FIMS capture protocol. And it was quite straightforward to implement it and you can imagine many different scenarios and extend this concept and this interoperability with different systems. Um, a lot, some more details, so we've done a REST implementation with online documentation so when you connect to the Brio itself you also get uh, user-friendly documentation which explains how you can use and how FIMS has been implemented and how you map this to the specific case of Brio. So this makes it very easy for a developer to practice, to test um, that the FIMS capture interface is working well. And what is coming next is we want to extend it because we think that's a, a good approach and we have a lot of good feedback and we want to extend it to support FIMS transfer and FIMS repository interfaces so that Brio can become a key component in a service-oriented architecture and that it can provide really a, a flexibility to um, manage assets, move them and uh, reference them in uh, large uh, architectures. Thank you.